Hey, Carmen, thanks for doing this today. I just, uh, what, yeah, are your, you know, what are your feelings right now going into the big day next week? How much talk have you had with scouts? I mean, have they given you an idea about when you might hear your name called? Um, still just a lot of unknowns. I mean, especially with, with the way the season ended, I'd love to be, be pitching in a super regional going to Omaha right now, but, um, it's just kind of the way it went. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very excited for me and my family heading in next week. And it's been obviously a long process to get there, but we're, we're pretty pumped up for it. All right. Uh, we'll go with, uh, Eric Boynton from the Spartanburg Carroll. Hey, Carmen. Thanks again uh, also for doing this. With the season uh, having been cut so short this year, now when you look back on it, how important was your outstanding performance in the Cape Cod League as far as helping your, your draft status? I mean, obviously that gave you a chance to come back from the injury, you know, show your skills, and now having this season cut short. Yeah, I think the Cape just essentially gave me just a track record, which I needed. Um, I mean, like you said, I got hurt last year, so I missed pretty much all of the spring. Only started, you know, three games last spring. And then obviously this season getting cut short. So that that gave me a little bit of a support system going into the draft that I didn't even think I was gonna need. I was hoping that this year was gonna was gonna go on and, and obviously position myself as good as possible. But I mean I'm just thankful that I was I was given the chance to get up there and compete up there and and obviously, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty important now looking back on it because, I mean, that was the last really full season that I had. So, And just while I've got you, um, can you kind of describe what your workout routine has been like through this, you know, social distancing and such and, and, and kind of how that's limited you and kind of some of the alterations you've had to make as far as, uh, as, as preparing uh, for, for maybe trying to play some kind of baseball later this season? Yeah, well, obviously with the uh, – with the season getting cut short, that, I mean, that obviously changed everything. Once baseball got taken away, I mean, it was a completely different workout routine that I was going with that I would be doing in season, obviously. Um, but with the virus, I mean, I came back before the gym started shutting down and stuff like that. So I was able to work out at the gym that I usually work out at in the off season anyways. And then once it got shut down, I had to get a little, little tricky with the workouts and stuff I've been doing, but, I mean, once they once they reopened about a couple of weeks ago, I just got back in the routine that I'd been doing, and I mean, I'm really just treating it like an off season with lifting, and then really the hardest part is just trying to judge on when I'm going to be back on the field again. I mean, you just really don't know at this point, so I'm I'm staying pretty close to in game shape as possible. I mean, I'm not pressing too hard down on myself like I, like I would be in a season, but. I'm still still pretty close to game ready. If if I need to turn on that switch, I mean, I can I can be there in a month or so. I will go with uh, Colin Taylor, Gamecock Central. Hey, Carm. Um, just kind of what have conversations been like with scouts, uh, kind of leading up to I guess Wednesday, and kind of what have they told you about what they like about your game, and what do they think you need to grow on as you kind of get ready for pro ball? Um, the conversations have been good. I mean, it's been pretty easy for for both sides of us. Um, I mean, most of them have just been Zoom calls with just more of just personality stuff and just trying to get to know you just because, I mean, obviously there's no season, so they can't go and watch you play in a game. It's more of just try to get a feel of what you're, what you're like as a human being, as a person, and just kind of feel you out through a phone call, which is difficult for sure. I mean, trying to figure out who a person is over a, over a video isn't exactly the easiest thing in the world, but I mean... I think they've just been telling me stuff that, that I've kind of known about before of like what, what really works for me and what doesn't work for me and certain stuff like that. I mean, obviously there's going to be a continued improvement along my whole baseball career. I mean, I don't think that's ever going to stop, but I think they liked that the package of I've, I've kind of developed with myself and, and the schools put together and helped me, helped me develop with. So. Next, uh, Greg Hadley from the state. Hey, Carmen, I was just curious with that workout routine that you're talking about, is that something you developed yourself? Are you working with personal trainers? Is it something you talked about with Coach Mead? Yeah, so the, the workout stuff, I mean, in the weight room specifically, that's kind of just Billy, Billy Anderson, our strength coach, was sending me stuff and sending everybody on the team stuff through Teamworks uh, that we could like kind of do like, and that was more of like if you don't have a gym to go to and, and you don't have like a facility if your things are shut down. So he was sending those. So those were great once everything kind of shut down and stuff. But the the routine that I'm doing is just kind of just like a typical off-season routine that 
that Billy helped me draw up and kind of create, um, just putting together different stuff that I had done before and kind of just figuring out what works. So, I mean, especially with these times too, with, with no baseball and really no like near future with it all. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely doing some experimental stuff in there, trying some new stuff out and just, just seeing what works. Back to uh, David Kleinter from the Post Courier. David, you're on mute still. Sorry. Carmel, I was wondering how difficult is it to make this decision not knowing uh, when you can go to a big league camp and, and not really knowing what's going to happen with baseball in the next few months? Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely difficult. Um, I, I would say it's probably just more difficult than it would be in just a normal season. I mean, it's still still a tough decision to make, especially with you and your family about either leaving college or or going on to pro ball and just just deciding what you want to do there. But I mean, yeah, it's it's even more difficult now with with no baseball going on and no real, really, really anything just to grab onto and just and just get your mind cleared away from it. But I mean, yeah, it's it's for sure difficult right now. Uh, Eric Boynton. Carmen, do you kind of have an idea in your mind as far as I know it's impossible to predict exactly where you're going to go, but do you kind of have a general idea of, okay, if I'm first round, there's no doubt I'm going. And also, is there uh, a place in the draft you would go where you would be disappointed where if, if I don't go among, say, the first 50 picks, then that's going to be kind of a letdown for me. Do you have any kind of thought process along those lines? Um, I mean, that's something that me and my family have definitely sat down and talked about. I don't think we have a, uh, a specific point or anything like that or a position in the draft where I would be happy or upset. I mean, I didn't even get drafted out of high school and I didn't really even have a picture in my mind that I'd get drafted out of high school. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at after, after just three years at Carolina and, and what they've done for me. Go ahead. John Whittle from the Big Spur next. Yeah, Carmen, you've had your last two years kind of cut short at, at South Carolina. What what do you take away from your experience? Does it feel incomplete in some ways? But but what did you what did you kind of learn about yourself in South Carolina? What what do you take away from here? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think you can definitely say that it feels incomplete just because it sucks having two seasons taken away from you, in which you really want to go out there and perform at your best ability and be around you know, the best friends that you've built in the past three years at, at the school that you've been at. Um, and, I mean, that's just something that I've just had to deal with, and I'm, I'm trying to treat it as a positive and be be optimistic about it all. But, I mean, it's definitely tough. I mean, 20, 21 years old, that's when you want to go out there and compete. You know, especially in college, you meet a lot of new people and you just want to be around them. And having that taken away, definitely hard, but, I mean, I'm hoping that these innings that I'm missing now are going to be, you know, something I can put on the back end of my career. It just keep my arm just that much more fresh. Because, um, I mean, at the end of the day, I want, to, I want to play baseball as long as I can. So, I mean, this just this just potentially extends my timeline just a little bit longer. And, and how, how do you feel like you were able to grow as a pitcher while you were here? Yeah, I mean, a lot. Basically from zero to, to where I'm at now. I mean, I came into Carolina – with just about zero pitching experience. I mean, I probably threw 50 career innings as a high schooler, so really not a whole lot to show for coming in and basically went from ground zero to, to where I'm at now. So, I mean, definitely a lot of development um, the three years there. And then not just on the physical side or the pitching side, but, I mean, a lot with a lot with the mental side that Coach Mead has helped me out with. I mean, he's he's been huge on that for me, and that's – that's kind of where I feel like my career took off is when I really grasped that um, with some of the stuff he was showing me. So, I mean, just a lot of growth in three years there. And I'm, re I'm really, really thankful for it. All right, we'll go next, uh, Cameron Gaskins, uh, ABC Columbia. When was the last time you were away from baseball for this long? And how have you kind of filled the time besides working out? Um, have you, you know, do you have any funny stories about kind of uh, this, you know, this, this down, down period, uh, having to go to, you know, different places to work out or, or whatnot? Um, yeah, the last time I was this away from baseball happened to be last year, actually. Um, 
which I hate to say. I mean, I was just part of the injury, having it taken away and then making some big steps from there, moving into the summer. But, I mean, that was probably the last time I was away for it for, you know, three or four months. I mean, I, I was in it more than I am now just because there was still games going on and I was at every single Carolina game. I mean, I was redshirted, but I was still able to go to the games and was still working out on the field. So, I mean, this is like a completely different ball game. There's no, nothing on TV. There's no professional baseball, no minor league baseball, no college baseball. So this is probably the first time that I've been completely zero baseball in my life. Um, so it's definitely an awkward feeling. But I guess some goofy stuff that we've done. I mean, we've been sneaking out onto the golf course with my younger brothers and a couple of my buddies from my high school team uh, doing th some throwing stuff and some, uh, some bullpen stuff out there. But, I mean. It's been real fun getting out there. I mean, it's wide open out there, and they probably have to shoot us off and get us off there a couple of days a week, but, but it's, it's for sure fun. Thank you. Sorry. Colin Taylor. Hey, Carm, I guess you were on some staffs with guys that have gotten drafted before, kind of Adam Hill, Cody Morris, those guys. Have you talked to them at all about what to expect from the next couple of days or Ted Schuyler talk to you at all about kind of what he's kind of hoping for with you? Yeah, I mean, with uh, with Adam and Cody, that was something that I just got an experience with, with being there my freshman year with them. I mean, basically we were there with them along almost the whole process. I mean, I still remember the day that, Adam and Cody both got drafted. We were both hanging out at the field and we were like all freaking out in the locker room. So that was pretty cool. Um, so, I mean, that was just something I could take an experience from and just learn from that. It's not necessarily like I've been reaching out to them or, or picking their brain too much, but it's just, it's something that I'm able to look back on and, and have a good experience with. So. Okay. Uh, Eric Boyne. You have a See a couple hands sorry up. About that. Yeah, okay. sorry about that. God, Carmen, if, if if they if they do officially, I guess they haven't officially done it yet. But if expected as as expected, if they cancel the uh, minor league baseball season, would that have any impact at all on your on your decision? Uh, no matter where you're drafted. Um, I mean, I definitely think it would have an impact on the professional side for me. Uh, but that's still something that's got to get there. I mean, still a week away. Still. Still not a professional baseball player yet, still still collegiate. But, um, I mean, yeah, for sure, it's going to have an impact on anybody who's a professional baseball player at the time. And and obviously it's not a great impact. You never want to be away from the game this long. So I'm, I'm hoping they get something together for sure. Would that make you maybe more apt to return to college, though? Um, I mean, I can't answer that for sure as of right now just because I don't exactly know what's going what's gonna to happen in the future. I mean, I don't think – one way would push me push me this way or the other way. I mean, if, if minor league baseball is canceled, I, I think it'd probably be tough for collegiate baseball to be carrying on. I mean, that's just kind of the platform that college baseball looks at is, is major league baseball and minor league baseball. I mean, they, they try to follow that, that kind of format. I mean, follow the same schedule. And so I, I don't see college returning before minor league or major league, but – I mean, if it did, that would be something that would definitely go into consideration. You just have to think about all opportunities for sure. Any uh, anybody else have questions for Carmen? Oh, Colin. Carmen, kind of maybe a little off topic, but you got a chance to be around some of the guys that you know. Even if you do or don't come back, are going to be on the team next year. Kind of, what's your take on some of the guys that are going to be returning next year? Whether that's you know. Maybe Thomas Barr, Brandon Jordan, and some of the younger guys um, that could be on next year's staff. Yeah, I think next year we're going to be really, really strong. Um, you know, whether that be without some of those guys or with those guys, I think regardless, the guys that we have coming in and the guys that are, are going to be there next year for sure is just already really, really strong. I mean, I think we're going to do some damage this year, especially in the SEC and Sucks that it got taken away, but, I mean, I think it's only going to benefit next year's team, and I fully see them as a team that can win a national championship next year. John? Uh, Carmen, kind of, kind of off topic, um, you, you mentioned not uh, pitching much before you got here. You think you would have developed into a first-round shortstop if you'd have stayed at that position? <laughs> uh... 
you know what? I'm going to go full confidence and say, yeah. <laughs> I bet you whoever hears this interview is going to slap me in the neck and say I was, a, I was an average high school shortstop. But just for my own sake and my, and my manliness, I'm not going to say no to that. I'm going to stick with the yes. But that's, that's a slow yes, you know, a yes, I guess. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. And else for Carm? Thanks, right. Carm. Thanks, guys. Uh, Thanks, yeah. Thank you, Carmen. Good Carmen. luck.